Hello, hello. My name is Kim Addis. I am the president and founder of Frame of Mind Coaching, and you have just joined the Frame of Mind Coaching podcast, where we welcome leaders from all over the world to come onto the podcast and get coached live and in person. Today, it's my pleasure to welcome a guest from Maryland, and his name is Nathan Bizimwa. Nathan, welcome. Hello, this is Nathan here. I'm living in Maryland right now. I'm the CEO of GKI Store and the founder of FX. It's a pleasure to have you online. <laughs> I'm so happy you're here. Tell us a little bit about what is GCash? GCash is the company, the primary company you're running. What is it? What do you do? Who is it for? Tell us a little bit about it. All right. GCash is called GCash Store in long. And this is a closing line that provides a perfect uh, style, style in closing, uh, mixing the Western culture and the Eastern culture. And the, it's almost like globalize, globalizing the closing industry. So I think on, on, on the website, we have a full description for whoever is interested, knowing a little bit longer about Gcash. So it's the Gcash store, correct? Correct, correct. Okay, got it. So a clothing line. And this was your invention. This is some an idea that you had that you said, this is what we need. And how long have you been running this company? We've been running this company for like two years now. And this is a, an idea I have with a partner of mine who is currently living in Asia. Okay. And yeah. So we made this in points uh, referring to the Eastern and Western closing culture. And we found where lines meet to provide a style that is gonna be affordable and looking good for both cultures. And is it clothing for men or women? I mean, it's a dual, I mean, it applies in men and women. Okay, got it, I understand. Interesting, and you're also running another company at the same time. That company is called Hefix. Did I say that right? Correct. Okay. What is Hefix? Hefix in long is FN Financial and Consulting Services, which provides financial and consulting services if you refer to its name. And this company has been running for almost like seven months now. And we are here to support entrepreneurs, linking them to consultants and providing financial services to the ones that might need them. Okay, so these are very different businesses. Right. And how are they both going? Are they thriving? How are they doing? Well, referring to the pandemic, we've been meeting a few challenges, but they both are doing good, mostly Gcash, which has been running for almost two years. And when we are selling product, it's different, different from selling services. So uh, I guess you know the difference between both companies. Right. And what made you want to start a second business? Like you're already, I mean, two years isn't very long for a business. You're running this business. It's growing. What made you want to start a new business? Well, since I was young, I always wanted to provide solutions to people who have been striving to like who have been going through challenges and they didn't know where to get solutions. And probably uh, a lot of people don't really have uh, a willing material that can help them. So I wanted to, because personally I've been there and I need at some point and still, I still need some sort of guidance. So I think it's, I found it important to kind of link people together for them like to work with the uh, I mean, they are experts in their department. And that is the thing I wanted to, to do to the people. That's why I created Hefix, actually. So let me understand. You had a time in your life when you experienced some kind of financial difficulty and you were looking for some help. And so that really inspired you to create a service that helps other people with financial difficulty. Did I get that right? That's correct. Okay, good. So, and are you married? Do you have kids? Tell us where you are, what stage are your, of your life you're dealing with right now. Well, I'm still single. 
Oh. Yeah, but I have projects for the future. Okay. And are you, you're single. Are you dating anyone or totally single? No, oh, well, as I said, I have projects for the future. It means I'm envisioning somebody. You're envisioning somebody. Okay. Yeah, right. Are you envisioning someone specific or just somebody? I mean, somebody specific. You have she's, someone in your in your brain. Right. She's smart. She's beautiful. And she's a kind person. And is she envisioning you for the future? Right. <laughs> yeah, she knows. And we, we, I mean, we both agreed on that. And we let the future agree at us. Okay. Wow. I want to really learn more about that. But what? <laughs> that's not why you came here. Tell us. <laughs> I think everybody wants to know more about that. What is your greatest challenge? Well, I mean, as an entrepreneur, I've been going through a lot of challenges, which my very different uh, uh, compared to different, I mean, perspective of life. Like last year was really a challenging year, specifically uh, with Gcash, because we had to plan. We had to concretize our plans, like uh, to to meet people, which was really hard because of the uh, lockdown. And this company here is something that needs to be in physical contact with the people, to like in terms of marketing or like I remember a session a specific time we had to do a photo shoot, and we didn't really have a lot of chances to do that because of the lockdown. A lot of people which I was proposing were kind of busy. Others were afraid of their lives. So we had to cancel the entire session, which means we had to cancel the, the entire selling uh, period because people could not really find our products that's, uh, I mean, that's interesting if we couldn't make ads or have uh, uh, so seductive pictures, you know what I mean? Or like attractive pictures. Exactly. Uh, we tried I don't to know seduce you, did them. You, did you mean seductive or attractive? I mean, we tried to seduce them. So, okay. Seductive yeah. pictures. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We so tried you to... couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't have your photo shoot. So, therefore, the lineup for the season had to kind of be, it, 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 you weren't able to launch it. We weren't, we weren't able to launch it, but I mean, we postponed the the, the entire program to a later date, which I mean, we, I mean, we, we, we kind of got late because of the pandemic. So what I mean here is that in, in, in time, in, a, in the perspective of money, in the perspective of uh, skills and uh, in the market, it was kind of challenging, and the good thing is that at the end of the, the day, we uh, we figure out other ways to cope up with the challenges we faced. Okay, so what is your greatest challenge today? Uh, today, my greatest challenge is mostly the time balance. I'm trying to balance time, financial uh, situation. And my uh, skills right now, because, okay. yeah. Let me start off by saying this, that uh, when people say that they have a shortage of time, which is what it sounds like you're saying, um, what they're really saying is that I ha I'm not able to leverage the time that I have. Does that make well, sense? I mean, at some point, because some days we you found as if like twenty four hours are not enough, you know. Yeah, some days twenty four hours are not enough. But you see, like we all have the same in, in terms of time, we all have the same amount of hours in the day, right? You and I, we have the same twenty four hours, and Richard Branson, he has the same twenty four hours, and Bill Gates, he has the same twenty four hours. But somehow they leverage their time differently. And so whenever right. we find ourselves thinking to ourselves, we, we, oh, I don't have enough time. That's a trigger. That's a sign. That's an indicator that you're not leveraging 
your resources appropriately. And so whenever I think to myself, I'm human, I think to myself, oh my God, you know, like I have all this stuff to do and I don't have enough time to do it. That's the starting point for me to say, okay, I need to think about this differently. I need to approach my time differently. I need to approach my skills differently. And I need to approach my resources differently. And so usually when we think that we have no time, we also have a set of beliefs that go along with it. Some of the beliefs sound like this. These are the things that must get done. That sounds like a fact, but it's not a fact. It's a belief. What I mean by that is a lot of times we believe there are things we must get done that don't actually need to get done. The next belief is that all these things need to get done by me. And also that's sometimes just a belief because there are lots of things that can potentially get done by someone else that we're not even thinking about. We're not leveraging. We're not looking around and saying, who else can do it? Which brings us to our third belief. I can't afford to hire people. That's not in our budget. And there's a belief that the only way to get assistance is by paying for it. And that's also a false belief. And so when we think about a shortage of time, really a shortage of time is a reflection of a set of limiting beliefs that prevent us from leveraging our time. Are you with me, Nathan? Right, I am. I'm following. Okay. So what that means is when you say, hey, I only have 24 hours in a day and I have all these things to do, the first thing I want you to do is ask yourself, do I actually need to do all of these things? That's number one. Maybe some of these things don't actually need to get done. Number two is, do I need to get all of these things done right now? Or can I lay them out appropriately so I can manage things in in a timely manner? Number three, can somebody else do this? If so, who could that somebody else be? And number four is, what do I have to offer in exchange for help if I don't have the financial resources to do so. So what can I tap into to leverage help expertise of others so that I coming up with a creative way to get my tasks done in a, in an affordable manner. So whenever someone says to me, I have a time problem, I say mostly no. You don't have a time problem, you have a thinking problem, and you're strategically thinking about your business in a way that creates bottlenecks and barriers. Right. What do you think? I mean, of course, sometimes we have to pass the ball to another person. Like when you find yourself unwilling to do something which you have to get done, we can buy somebody else's services or... I want you or, to think about it differently. It's not about being unwilling to get something done. It's about, from a leader's standpoint, what is the best use of your time, the best, most strategic use of your time? And what I find is a lot of times leaders spend time working on tasks that don't leverage their greatest skill or their greatest contribution. Right. It's like, it's like we have people who say, oh my God, you know, I'm running a business and I have the laundry to do. Well, doing laundry isn't the best use of their time. It's not the most strategic thing for them to do. I think the best thing to do is to set priorities, to know first what comes first and then what comes second. And I mean, time will never be enough, just like resources, it will always be scarce. And this is exactly what I'm saying is that thinking Mm -hmm. there's never enough time and resources will always be scarce, will keep you playing in a game that always, where you're always confronting scarcity. Right. So I want you to think differently. 
This is not a time management problem. This is a thinking problem. Okay. Okay. And it's very important that this message comes across. And it's really about when I think about my time, right off the bat, I think in terms of limitations. And that thinking creates limitation for me. But if I had uh, an, you know, an, a never ending supply of human capacity, then I don't have a time barrier. Right. So it's really about how we think about time and how we think about resources. If we think we have a limitation in resources, we do. If we think to ourselves, there's no shortage of resources. There's no shortage of money. There's no shortage of help. There's no shortage of ta talent or skill or solutions. There's no shortage. And I have access to that. Then you find the solutions you're looking for. But if you walk around thinking, I have, there are limitations because we have to be realistic. Right? Right. Those, that thinking process creates a blockage for you and prevents you from accessing resources that are really right at your fingertips that you're discounting and not considering. Okay. So uh, if I get you right, in other words, it means to be content of the time we have and plan accordingly or something? No. Oh, okay. No. Look. Let's pretend that there's one hour in a day, okay? okay? And we have only one hour to get all the things done to run our business. Can you, Nathan, get all the things done in one hour by yourself? No. I don't think, yeah. No, right? Impossible. So now you have to think a little bit more strategically, a little bit more creatively. What do I need to have in place in order to get all the things done in one hour. Maybe I need more people. Maybe I need more automation. Maybe I need more systems. Maybe I don't need to do all the things and I need to do half of the things and still have the same impact or the same result. So it really requires a different kind of thinking. It's not about being happy with the time you have. It's about maximizing the time you have by thinking strategically. What do I need to have in place in order to get everything I need to get done in one hour. So now you have to stretch. You have to look beyond your doors, right? Your four walls. You have to open the door and you have to look outside and say, who else can I bring in? What else can I do? What system can I put in place? Is there an automation I can use? And now what we're doing is we're making that hour jam packed. We're using that hour effectively. So it's not about being happy with the time you have. It's not about, you know, asking God for more hours in the day. It's about taking the time we have and saying, how do I maximize this time? What kind of thinking do I need in order to maximize this time? In order to leverage the hour that I have. Right? Because now all of a sudden, if I have five Nathans, I get five times the amount of productivity. How do I increase my productivity? How can I think in a way that does this, that doesn't rely only on me being the, the single person being productive? Right. Does this make sense to you? Right. I mean, that's, that's the use of teamwork in companies because they believe one single person cannot, cannot execute all their roles at once. And sometimes we, as leaders or CEOs, we face a problem of skills. Because the higher the person is skilled, the higher amount of probably a recompense we have to give them, like money, or in terms of, I mean, mostly in terms of money, you have to, to pay for their services. And more, more often they are sold according to the skills they provide to the company. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Right. Does that, does that idea that you just put on the table, does that idea feel limiting? Or does, does that idea feel like expansive? Do you, does that feel tight or does that feel open? I mean, 
It depends on perspective again. Well, your perspective. Well, I can. Your perspective is that the greater the skill, the more I have to pay. Does that feel exciting or does that feel like unreachable? I mean, it's, it's reachable, of course. Okay. Yeah. You're making it sound very hard. I mean, it's not hard. It just depends on where the company is uh, in terms of financial situation. Because like, if the company is limited in terms of resources, they, it, they find it hard to, like, to pay for expensive services. Yes, but again, resources is just like time. So I'll give you an example, okay? Okay. Um, this is not my first business. So right now I'm running a coaching company. I've been doing it for 16 years, but it's not my first business. Okay. Prior to this, I owned another company. And in the early, early days, I was, I was young. I was living in an apartment. I had a young child. And, you know, I had no physical location and I had this idea that I needed a spot to work out of and I needed to hire co-op students. Why co-op students? Because you don't have to pay them, right? I didn't have, a, I didn't have any financial resources to pay them and I didn't have a place. Are they going to come to my apartment? That's, you know, no school is going to send kids to go to some lady's apartment, right? So what happened? I was going by a, a mall, a shopping center, and I saw that there was an empty space in the mall. And so I called up the uh, managers of that mall and I said, hey, this is what I'm doing. I'm working with young people. I'm really looking for a space. If I could have the space every afternoon, that would be great. And they gave it to me for free. Okay. Okay. And so no financial resources required. What was required was creativity, ingenuity, and a little bit of guts, right? The and guts. so what, yeah. what happens is, what happens is we think I can't afford it. So we don't take action to solve our problems creatively. So there are all kinds of resources out there. Not all of them will cost you money. Maybe they might cost you a little bit of time. Maybe they might cost you a little bit of an exchange. Maybe it's a deferred expense. Maybe it's a partnership. Maybe there's something else in place that you could leverage. But what I'm really pushing you to do is say, how do I leverage my resources? How do I access the resources I need without automatically thinking in advance, it's going to cost me money and I don't have it. So forget it. I got to do it myself. I mean, that's, that's a question I asked myself several times yes, yeah, last year. And I'm glad because we are having this conversation. And, you know, it helps open more the minds about how to leverage my resources. And your yeah, time. And, and, and my time. Exactly. And, uh -huh. Yeah. I encourage you to think creatively. I mean, yeah, you... Uh, Tell me first, uh, I'm sorry, but I have to, re to return the question to you. Please. What are the biggest challenges you faced when you were running your company, your first, the very first one? The very first company is that yeah. a lot of people around me didn't necessarily believe that I could do what I could do. You know, I remember I had the idea of hiring co-op students and somebody, I won't say who, said, who's going to give you co-op students? Where are they going to come? To your bedroom? And I thought, wow, that's an important problem I have to solve. I remember, here's another one, a long time ago, I said, you know what? I think I would be a great presenter, like a, a public speaker. And somebody said, you don't have any expertise in anything. And I thought, wow, maybe he's right. Maybe I don't. So for me, my greatest challenge was you know, as entrepreneurs, we have self-doubt, but when somebody else adds doubt to your equation, it makes matters harder or worse. Right. For me, that was my greatest problem was I wasn't sure if I could run my own business. I wasn't sure if I had what it took. I wasn't sure if I could do all the things that I wanted to do. I mean, we were never sure until we realize the thing you got to try right right yeah nathan i hope this conversation helped you think a little bit more broadly 
And um, I really hope it challenges your perspective of the resources you have and how you're using your time. For those of you who are listening, again, I want you to think about how you think about time and how you think about resources. If you have a challenge that you want to share with me on the podcast, please reach out to me. My email address is kim at frameofmindcoaching.com. And if you have a challenge that you're not so willing to share on the podcast, but you do want help with, please reach out to me as well. My email address is kim at frameofmindcoaching.com. Nathan, how do people find your very interesting clothing line? Well, they can visit us online to our website, which is www.jcashstore.com or our okay. Instagram, yeah, or Facebook. Amazing. So that's G Cashster. Yeah. S P O R E. Is that it? Well, it is J. J like or G? G like like goodness gracious me. Correct. G. Correct. Yep. G K. Yeah. Like yeah. Like K, Kim. Kim exactly. A. Like astronaut. S. H. Store. That's store. store. Like S. T. O. R E dot com. Perfect. Amazing. Yeah. Everybody go look it up. I'm very excited to see what this intersection between Western and Eastern clothing looks like. In the meantime, thanks for listening. Uh, please go on YouTube and iTunes and all the places you listen. And please like, share, and comment. And until we see you again. Mm-hmm.